For many years, research scientists have been searching for ways to educate and to vitalize the natural defensive system in our bodies called the immune system. Never has this quest been more important than now. It is accepted that we are losing the war against infectious disease. Many medical scientists and practitioners have resigned themselves to the fact that it is not if, but when, the next worldwide pandemic strikes, for which we will have no protection. Because our ability to produce more powerful antibiotics and antivirals is being overtaken by the speed which the germs that threaten us have demonstrated in producing new and ever more lethal strains. Around the world, literally billions have been spent on the research and treatment of cancer, yet the death rate hasn't significantly changed. Autoimmune diseases and allergies are becoming accepted as almost the norm because of the increasing number of people who suffer from these conditions. So what must we do? Stand idly by and accept as inevitable that we are increasingly vulnerable? Fortunately, because of new discoveries that you need to know about, the answer is no. We don't have to accept such an outcome. We can empower our immune systems in order to give us and our family and friends and everyone we can share this information with the optimal opportunity to live the long and healthy life that we desire and deserve. Because of transfer factors. Transfer factors are nature's gift to us. They've been available to us for as long as life has existed on this earth, but only recently have we discovered their empowering role for our immune systems. In 1949, a researcher in South Carolina named H. Sherwood Lawrence was trying to understand how a person can become immune to a disease. How one's body can recognize and respond to a threat without becoming ill from that threat. So Dr. Lawrence found a lab assistant who had been exposed to tuberculosis. He knew this because that individual, when given something called a tuberculin skin test, reacted positively by whelping up in the area of the TB skin test injection. And then Dr. Lawrence tested other assistants until he found one who had a negative TB skin test, which meant that individual had never been exposed to tuberculosis. So Dr. Lawrence drew some blood from the TB skin test positive individual and processed it by spinning it in a centrifuge to separate the white blood cells, the germ-fighting cells called lymphocytes, from the red blood cells and he took the white blood cells and by further processing broke their cell walls and removed the fluid and collected the fluid from within those fractured lymphocytes and he put the fluid into a syringe and he injected it into the assistant who had never been exposed to tuberculosis and waited it was really a pretty nervy thing to do two days later he did a TB skin test on the assistant who had never been exposed to tuberculosis and lo and behold, the skin test whelped up and he or she reacted just as if they had been exposed to tuberculosis. Dr. Lawrence had transferred the recognition of the tuberculosis germ from one who had been exposed to tuberculosis to one who had never been exposed. He didn't understand exactly what had happened. He just knew he had transferred something, some factor from one individual to another and by doing so, he had transferred the ability to recognize a germ, tuberculosis, in an individual who hadn't had prior exposure. And thus the term transfer factor was introduced into the scientific world. Over the next several decades, millions of dollars were spent on transfer factor research, and over 3,000 papers were written. But the process of producing transfer factors was very expensive and time-consuming. Use of transfer factors was mainly confined to the lab, and the public was unaware of the potential health benefits that transfer factors offered. In 1989, two researchers in South Carolina made a very important discovery. Doctors Wilson and Paddock found that transfer factors were abundant in the first maternal milk, called colostrum, that's produced right at and right after birth. Further research revealed that all mammals produce transfer factors that are molecularly identical. It was discovered that Mother Nature has devised a method for the mother to pass on her immune system knowledge to her newborn by nursing. This first benevolent act by the mother enables the newborn, thrust from a warm, sterile environment of the womb to a harsh, cold world filled with germs, to survive. Let's examine exactly how this happens. 
chicken pox is a good example to use because before the chicken pox vaccine most people contracted this viral illness but extremely rarely did anyone have a second bout with chicken pox why why not develop the illness over and over because the individual may have been exposed to chicken pox dozens hundreds of times after that first episode on the screen you'll see a diagram which demonstrates how one builds up immunity to a disease the straight line highlighted is a time sequence from the exposure to a disease until the immune system begins to respond in this instance it would be while the person with chicken pox was breaking out in little red bumps which transformed to multiple itchy blisters after several days the immune system cells which you see highlighted begin to multiply and once sufficient immune system cells have been created you begin to win the battle and the chickenpox virus is defeated the blisters scab over and eventually you get well your immune system ultimately protected you but not before you went through some pretty miserable days of illness so what then occurred your immune system stored the memory of the chickenpox virus in special immune system cells which we refer to as quite appropriately memory cells later you can walk into a room full of people with chicken pox and remain totally unconcerned because now your body's immune system has knowledge knowledge about the identifying features of the chicken pox virus and so even though the chicken pox virus frequently tried to attack you again it was unsuccessful because each time it entered your body the particular immune system memory cell that carried the identity of the virus instantly alerted its fellow immune system cells and a huge number of fighters was produced which overwhelmed the hapless chickenpox virus and you didn't even know that you'd been exposed you never became ill you can see the short line in what is called a secondary immune response as compared to the time sequence when you became ill that primary immune response this makes sense doesn't it what would be our quality of life if we became ill over and over with the same disease we'd be ill all of the time but by having an immune system that can remember prior illnesses we can develop what is called resistance or immunity to that disease and what we've discovered is that the little protective memory molecule that provides us protection is that factor that Dr. Lawrence transferred from the person who had been exposed to tuberculosis to the person who hadn't been exposed. Memory molecules which give us early recognition and a quick response to a disease threat are called transfer factors. Wouldn't it